Pastor Mark Driscoll, he was misguided. Alex Magala pushes back. Saying, you know, that I was ripping my shirt off. This is what happens when sloppy leadership meets Vegas Act meets John the Baptist. But what's the bottom line? Is this really pagan? Without recapping everything, Alex Magala, you know, the Vegas sword swallower, recently posted his own response. Pastor Mark Driscoll, he was misguided. To the accusations of Pastor Mark Driscoll that his act was a demonic striptease. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club as well as John Lindell's characterization of him as a committed Christian and family man. He is married, has children, and attends Mosaic Church. He's been made a new creation through his faith in Jesus Christ. So how does he describe himself in his own words? Well, right before I start his video, I'd like to take a quick second and ask you to give this video a thumbs up at the end if you liked it. And if you're worried you might forget later, just go ahead and click that like button now. I greatly appreciate your support and your comments like this one from Dennis Connor 5919. I'm a pastor of 52 years. Your insight is the best I've heard. Thanks, Dennis. And thanks to my audience for your engagement. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and visit pastoraj.com where you can stay connected with me. Sign up for my weekly email newsletter by my new book, End Times Mission, and partner with Gospel Ministries as we seek to help others experience, demonstrate, and share God's great gospel. Now let's jump into Magala's video. Now before I press play here, I do want to attempt to be somewhat gracious because when we talk about Mark Driscoll or John Lindell, we're talking about pastors. These are people who, in some senses, when they decide to follow God's call into ministry, they sign up for criticism. So Alex Magala is not a pastor. He's not a ministry leader. He, he seems to, as you'll see in his own words, loosely identify as a Christian, and that's just because he was baptized as a baby. I think it's great that he has attended Erwin McManus's Mosaic Church. So as a pastor and as Christians, I think we always ought to celebrate people who are pursuing God and a personal relationship with Jesus on any level. And plus, in today's day and age, I love when people identify as a Christian. We need a lot more of those out there. However, as you'll see, this is his formal response to the outrageous episode that he was at the center of at the Greater Men's Conference and all of the public back and forth. Actually, it was probably just forth because after the conference, it seemed like all of it was coming from John Lindell. Nonetheless, you can tell that he's feeling the weight of all of this and he felt a need to address things with his Instagram followers. All right. Well, things got a little bit out of hands and watching all the stuff that is going on on internet and all the controversies i just wanted to clarify some details yeah, j just a little bit out of hand huh <laughs> just wanted to say that i owe no explanation to anyone about my faith in god about what i'm doing about my past but just wanted to clarify some details so it's not gonna affect my family and uh, my close friends. So what are your thoughts on that? His, his initial reaction, certainly understandable. You know, you're, you're at the middle of this, this, all of this hoopla. He certainly didn't ask for it. He's just doing what he's always done. We can have a discussion about that in and of itself in terms of the, the type of employment that you have and how you make your money and, and so on, because he, he brings some of that up later on in his video. But I'm not so sure how I feel about the statement that you don't owe anybody an explanation for your faith. I'm actually thinking how Peter says in his epistle, to always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have. So there certainly is a, an element of the Christian faith that is public, and um, he is a performer to public audiences. I, I would say that we have, we, owe, we do owe people an explanation for our faith. Granted, our faith is something that only God ultimately knows that we have, and, and maybe us, but a Christian's faith by very nature is a public thing. It interacts with not just you and God, but also with 
the relationships that you have with the people around you. What are your thoughts on that? Again, I don't want to be too hard on Alex. I just want all Christians who might be listening to the sound of my voice to think about the public nature of your faith and what it actually means to identify as a Christian, because some of us might think this way unknowingly. Even now, you might make a similar statement. But I think from a biblical perspective, and even from God's perspective, I, I think that your your faith is a very public thing. You know, our baptism, for example, is something that's very public. We're making a public declaration that we're identifying with Jesus. We should start with a video that was I seen yesterday from Pastor John Lindell that was really touching and I appreciate all the support from James River Church community. So I, I think what he's referencing there is Lindell's midweek sermon, his midweek message in which he condemned Mark Driscoll and called him publicly to repentance. I, I'm pretty sure that's the video that he's talking about there. In fact, if you go to his Instagram page, you can see actually just before he posted this video, he posted a, a textual response on Instagram to that sermon from Lindell. And just like overall, it was an amazing experience. It's interesting to hear him talk about the James River folks and John Lindell in this fashion, because most of us in the social media world have only interacted with him in regard to the hoopla that we saw. Before Pastor Mark Driscoll uh -oh. about that he didn't like my performance. But anyways, after watching a video yesterday from John Lindell explaining, just defending me, I just wanted to clear some details. So first of all, I have no kids. I have a family, I have no kids. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming he means by that that he's married, no kids, I guess, but he was characterized by John Lindell in that sermon as somebody who had kids, who attends or regularly attends Mosaic Church, and, and a committed Christian. Important to take note of, because some of this was the basis for Lindell's scathing repudiation of Driscoll, accusing him of spreading slanderous accusations about a brother in the Lord. Yep, so that's number one. And secondly, some sources say that I was saved by God around 10 years ago, which is not correct because I'm an Orthodox Christian. And I'm sorry if I'm wrong in terminology. I just, uh, English is my third language, so I'm trying, but uh, just bear with me. So Orthodox Christian means that I get through the ceremony of becoming a Christian as a baby. So pretty much all my family is an Orthodox Christian and uh, me as well. With that said, I had no problem going to attending a Baptist church in Los Angeles, Mosaic Church with Pastor Erwin McManus, primarily because my friends were going there and just in general, there are good people. And in Los Angeles, it's really hard to find honest and just in general good people first you know it was a circle of friends and second is i found a lot of wisdom in in bible stories that mcmanus was sharing with us also he is amazing in public speaking but <laughs> that's another topic i think it's worth noting here for those of you who might be listening to this from different branches of christianity roman catholic protestant orthodox those are the three major ones but i think one of the takeaways from his statement is that he is identifying as a christian because he was baptized as a baby so some Christians baptize infants, some don't. And without getting into that broader topic in this video, I'd like to take just a second to point out what that baptism symbolizes. The water that washes us or that we are immersed into is symbolic of our being buried with Christ and then raised again, resurrected, spiritually speaking, to a newness of life. In other words, what it means is we've been born again in our heart. So the baptism isn't just a physical act. It's not just a religious ritual. It's pointing to something else, an inward reality, whereby we've been united with Christ. And so the question isn't just, have I been baptized? It's, have I been baptized on the inside? The Apostle Paul said a similar thing about circumcision, that what matters is 
circumcision of the heart. So it's great to hear people identify as Christian. It's even better to hear that they've been baptized. But what we're really getting at when we're trying to say, am I legitimately a Christian, is do I have the Spirit of God on the inside? And am I producing the fruit, that baptism by the Spirit, outwardly in my lifestyle? On top of that, I have no problem, you know, I see videos of like some church judging me that I'm like in the meditation pose in Bali. Look, I was taking a tour <laughs> and I have no problem experiencing or going through the ceremony and get to know other cultures, other languages, other people, because my number one focus is meeting good people. Okay, I wanted to stop here because he goes into another portion here where he talks about friendship, with, which I think is its own discussion. You know, what, what is the nature of friendship? What is biblical friendship? But again, kind of going back to what we just talked about, about baptism, there were a lot of people on social media making something of Alex and his visiting these Buddhist shrines, expressing on his Instagram page that he has an interest in Buddhism and meditation, hoping that it would improve his body. So I think a great question to ask here, and this is for Alex too, if you know he happened to be watching this video, what does a born again, baptized Christian look like on the outside? How do they engage other religions? I mean, absolutely, we would say Christians should be friendly, but should we and can we participate in some of these legitimately pagan religious rituals and then say, hey, I'm just doing a cultural thing. You know, the Apostle Paul kind of gets into this a little bit when he talks about the idea of a Christian being unequally yoked in his terminology with an unbeliever. And in that context, Paul says, what does light have in common with darkness? Or what does a temple share with idols? There's a distinction. Being a Christian a real Christian, a true Christian on the inside, not somebody who's just gone through a ceremony, but somebody who has had that ceremony inwardly impact them. You'll hear at the very end of his video how Alex Magala views God's salvation in his life, and it's probably not the way you would explain it, especially not if you're an evangelical Christian. And so I would say this lovingly to Alex or to anybody else who's listening, what you should be looking for in your own life is spiritual fruit, not just have I been washed in water, not just do I identify as a Christian culturally. Because I think if we can engage Buddhism, a pagan religion culturally, then maybe we can also be a cultural Christian. Certainly, we don't want to stand before the judgment one day, telling Jesus that we were just a Christian culturally, but you want to be one inwardly. And so that's what I'm looking for here. That's what I'm hoping that everyone listening to my voice right now will pursue. That's why the Apostle Paul said, examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Make sure that your words and your name line up with your actions and a lifestyle indicative of somebody who knows Jesus. And uh, just get to know the philosophy of this religion or, or, or that religion. I have friends that are Buddhists, Buddhist monks, and uh, there you go. just in general, you know, like if, I, if I'm a black belt in Jiu-Jitsu, that doesn't mean that I cannot attend a karate class. That just gonna make me a better martial artist, more versatile martial artist. So I'm not locking myself into going to one thing or, or another thing. I'm just loyal to my friends, but not to the some temple or or one church. So you know, what exactly does he mean by that? It's a little ambiguous, and I, I think given him the benefit of the doubt, we can it seems like he may be saying that he believes in being a good friend. But on the other side of it, he may be practicing what a lot of other people believe, and that's just that religion in and of itself doesn't matter. I'm not suggesting that that's what he believes, but certainly we can make an idol of friendship. And if we are doing and participating in things that it, at least seemingly are opposed to the truth of Christ, then maybe we've taken the concept of friendship a little too far. But again, getting back to that idea that our faith is actually something that isn't just personal, but it has a lot to do with our interpersonal relationships, and it should spill over into our friendships. You know, a, a great question to ask would be if you truly are a Christian and you're in a Buddhist shrine, are you taking that opportunity to share the truth 
of your Christian faith, the faith that the Bible teaches with that individual. I think that's a good contrast. My number one focus is to make friends. I hope that is not offending you and just in general, it's just bizarre. So what else? We're going past Mark Driscoll and uh, you know what he was saying about me that's just like completely misguided because saying, you know, that I was ripping my shirt off. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. You know, I, I wonder how he felt in the moment when this was all going down, if he was there in person or the first time that he heard Mark Driscoll's words. First of all, it was a vest. Second of all, in order to prove that sword swallowing is real, I had to just get everything out of the way so people can see a pure okay. art of sword swallowing. So here's uh, his explanation. Thirdly, climbing on the pole with a heavy vest is not really convenient and going upside down. So just wanted to, you know, clarify some things. The stripper pole that what that he called my pole, it's actually Chinese pole. It's a very ancient uh, circus art originated in China. So it's Chinese pole. It's a pole covered in rubber and you have to have at least strong pants to have a grip. Okay, so I, I think here we can actually open this discussion as to whether or not there is a connection between a stripper pole, and what we saw with Magala's performance. Now, clearly, he's been doing this kind of thing for a long time. He uses the word Chinese pole, talks about, you know, a, a, a cultural art form. Because whether or not it is a stripper pole in the modern American sense is irrelevant. Certainly, China is not a Christian culture by any stretch. We believe the church is growing there. Officially, the Chinese government says there's like 45 million Christians, but unofficially, there may be as many as 100 or 150. We just don't know. That's 150 million. Nonetheless, it's it's a culture that historically has known Buddhism. Of course, the atheism of the recent communist government. Buddhism itself is just a branch of Hinduism. That's what the Buddha was. He was Hindu. I say that to say if you're a Christian and you're flirting with some of these things and, you know, you're, you're practicing meditation, like a lot of this might depend on what you mean by that. The Bible teaches us to meditate, which is to think on, to muse on, metaphorically to ruminate like a sheep does on the word of God, to digest it over and over and over again so that it becomes part of our life and our lifestyle. But that's not exactly the idea of Buddhist meditation. Buddhist meditation is becoming one with your inner self. It's disconnecting yourself metaphysically from this world. The answers in Zen Buddhism are within. They're not outside of yourself in the person of Christ. So the, these are some of the conflicts that we might see between a Christian lifestyle and that of a pagan. Now getting back to, so how all of this applies to the stripper pole <laughs> is that the stripper pole or the Chinese pole or whatever you want to call it, the way he's expressing it comes from a particular culture. So let's bring Driscoll's initial accusation into the mix here. Is this pole demonic? Is it a doorway for demons? I think you can still make a case that it is, and even more so coming from a pagan culture. In the ancient times, in the biblical times, they had everything that Driscoll mentioned in the beginning part of his sermon that he never got to give. They had the Asherah pole. They ascended and descended. They had altars and sexual rituals. And this was what John Lindell tried to do in his midweek rebuke of Mark Driscoll. He tried to disconnect what we saw in the conference as a cultural display, saying that it can't in any way be demonic. But I think one of the things we see here is that not only can we not rule out that connection, but it might be even more clear when we see the influence of pagan culture on his art form. So just worth considering, because again, this was Driscoll's original point that he got kicked off the stage for. Is this demonic? Are these people just pagans? You can slap a Christian label on anything, but that doesn't mean that it is flowing out of an inwardly Christian lifestyle, the heart that has been transformed by the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're looking for here. This isn't meant to put anybody down. It's meant to showcase the truth so that those who are listening can have the fullness of life that you can only find in Jesus and a lifestyle that is lived out in obedience to God's character. So we're going through that, okay? If 
so his team was digging about my past and all that you know like it's it's just like it's so bizarre it's a 53 year old man judging 21 year old me i don't think his team people were digging up his past again he might have been going off of things that john lindell said in his sermon about mark but quite frankly it, it's been like two weeks now and mark has been publicly silent that i was a stripper first of all it's called go go dancing and it's a big difference because what me and my team of dancers were doing, we were performing, guys were performing in shorts and girls were covering, there's no any revealing of, of women, women breasts, nipples or any sorts. So it's basically... I, I guess good that he clarifies there. <laughs> I don't know this anybody's going to see that distinction other than him. You could see the same thing when you go to the beach in Los Angeles or you go to our club. And mm. on top of that, if you see that thing it, like as a sinful or whatever, I wanted to say that all those people are amazing people. All those performers you can see on events like Oscars opening ceremony, halftime shows and Cirque du Soleil and what I mean are we getting our sense of what's proper from Hollywood potentially the most unspiritual display of modern occultism I'm not saying these these aren't nice people because this is always the the pushback from those who don't want judged they say you know I'm a nice person or they're nice people well they might be nice people but I think what happens today in our culture is that niceness is a disguise for sinful selfish behavior that isn't family friendly behavior that isn't good for your friends or for anybody else in this world but we say well i'm nice but are you because niceness kindness the way the bible describes it love is patient love is kind it's considerate and the effect of its actions on its community i stayed there is because my boss is an ex go go dancer and it happened to be that Cirque du Soleil managers they seen his scene and they hired him. Now he I'm not sure if, if now he is performing, he's still performing, but he was a main character in the show La Rev which is in Vegas in hotel. So that was really inspiring for me. So this is apparently how he got hired his boss got hired into go-go dancing and uh, I, I don't know honestly please leave a comment and enlighten me is, is there a difference between stripping and go-go dancing go-go dancing just doesn't take all the clothes off is that the difference and uh, to me it was a hard decision because because I am from a conservative family and uh, just imagine having a sixty dollars left after you pay the rent you have no friends, you have no family, and you know almost zero English. Just in general, you know, like I couldn't find a job. And performing on the streets, that was not sustainable because after a couple shows, you get so much damage from sword swallowing. Back then I was not an experienced sword swallower, so I couldn't perform consistently. Just you know, I, I didn't realize this guy's story. I'm not surprised by it, but I, I didn't realize. N number one, I guess he said he's 21, I thought he said, in his early 20s, I would imagine. So he's still pretty fresh. And I guess that would mean just a couple of years ago, he was performing on the streets. And, you know, that lack of income led him to accepting his opportunity in showbiz. But it is interesting he says he's not proud of it because he comes from a conservative family. I don't know anything about his family or what part of the world he's from. I mean, I, I'm assuming that's kind of like a Russian accent. So maybe part of the old Soviet Union or Soviet bloc, one of those countries, maybe the Ukraine. I don't know. And again, not judging because everybody has a past. We're not judging Alex's past. I, I think it's great that he identifies as a Christian. I would like to see him internalize that a little bit more and then express that internalized faith outwardly. But it, it does seem like this this is kind of pricking his conscience a little bit here. He, he, it seems to be, at least if I'm reading him right, that he's not proud of his past as a go-go dancer. Certainly not something I would want to poke fun at him for. But at some point in our lives, we have to look at what we're doing and say, does, does what I'm doing, does the way I'm behaving outwardly, does it represent the faith that I have on the inside? Because I think you can also contrast his story with 
those of other people in the Bible that went through incredibly difficult situations where their character was tested, yet they did the right thing. Joseph was one of those people. Jesus was one of those people. David was one of those people. Of course, David wasn't perfect, and I wouldn't expect Alex or anybody else to be perfect. But pressure and challenges also aren't an excuse to live a lifestyle that doesn't line up with God's demands. To keep in mind, you know, my first tip from sword swallowing that I got was $4.50. Now just put in the equation, you have $60 in your pocket, 35 of them you spend on a sword and the rest you spend on milk and oatmeal. But I just wanted to say, you know, I own everything that, that I was doing and it was a thought through well, decision and that made me a just better overall performer and that's where i developed my act that you could see america's got talent britain's got talent and 13 15 total got talents ellen degeneres show so i hope you get to understand the whole picture and not taking this out of context. And, and that's not what we want to do here. You know, my intent is not to push somebody. My, my intent is to help people like Alex and others. My intent is not to push somebody down. My intent is to help people like Alex live the fullness of their Christian life. So I, I'm actually glad that he shared this video because it really gives you an insight into the person behind all of the controversy and what his past is. I'm happy for him that he was able to come out of difficulty. That's kind of what God does. He works in our difficulty to refine us, to make us better. And I just want to encourage him and anyone else who's listening out there today to let your difficulty be God's agent to bring about his purpose for your life, but do it in a way that you're representing his character. This is what we see repeatedly from people in the Bible. And there's just something beautiful about God bringing you out of things that way. You don't have anything about your past that you have to explain. You know, one of those episodes in the Bible was when Abraham goes into Egypt and he gives his wife away as his sister to Pharaoh. What a major compromise. And I was wondered, like, how did he explain that over Thanksgiving dinner? It, yeah, they didn't eat Thanksgiving dinner, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> how did he explain that cowardly act, that massive compromise to his community and later his kids? I mean, obviously people knew about it. It was written down in the Bible. And I think that's a good point of contrast for us. We want to live our lives in a way that we don't have something to be ashamed of in the future. Everybody has things that they're ashamed of, so I'm not pointing fingers. But to the best of our ability, we want to try to exemplify God in what we do so that we can truly be blessed. So all those go-go dancers that you see in the clubs, they also had a hard decision, and those are generally people who just didn't want to sleep with people like Harvey Weinstein. So okay. you compare this <laughs> with how to make it in Hollywood, what we did is nothing. So just chill, okay? Um, uh, this is kind of minimizing forward, to me, I think. Just wanted to that we we're all? not gonna cause all this feud one against another, and I hope you find God in your heart. Because I know my way of expressing my faith is different, and let me explain just like real quick. When, when I perform, I swallow a sword and attempting a death-defying stunt, climbing on top of the pole and then going upside down. The moment when I drop down, that to me is when I give my life to God. Mm. And the moment when I stop one inch before hitting the ground, that's the moment when I get saved by God. God bless everybody and book my show. Okay, well, there's the clip and Alex's response in its entirety. You can really see his view on his Christian faith at the very end there, where he describes what his salvation is, certainly from an, a performance perspective, it's absolutely incredible, an incredible show of strength, a death-defying act that probably 
makes him feel very near to God, realizing that if he slips, he's going to be impaled by the sword that he just swallowed. And without beating a dead horse, I think we all know that there's a distinction. It almost even goes without my saying between the way he's describing salvation and salvation as it is defined in the Bible. The Apostle Paul said it this way, that if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, this is the gospel, you will be saved. But he wasn't talking about salvation from some kind of death-defying adrenaline rush. He was talking about salvation from these things that plague the human soul. Salvation from our past. Salvation from our mistakes. Salvation from the death that we will one day experience. And it's not just God saving us from getting hit by a car when we walk across the street. It's God saving us once and for all from death through the future resurrection. And so that's what the gospel is. What I would encourage somebody like Alex or anybody else that's out there listening, and and maybe you consider yourself to be a Christian. Maybe you say, I'm a Christian because I was baptized when I was a baby. That's great. It's just not necessarily what it means to be a Christian, because true Christians, people who put their faith into practice every day in their relationships and who aren't afraid to declare the name of Jesus publicly, those kind of people look different than the world around them. And so if you're out there today and and you want that kind of a faith, that kind of a relationship with God, something that's unique and distinct, it was something I became aware of when I was a teenager. You know, I was actually raised Catholic, which is similar to Orthodox. I was baptized as a baby, but it wasn't until I started reading the Bible and the words of Jesus that I sensed something changing on the inside of me and that my life would never be the same again. If you want that kind of a faith that meets you where you're at, that brings God's eternal salvation to you right now, free of charge, I want to encourage you to get baptized if you haven't done so already, but also just to make this confession with your mouth. Say this prayer with me right now to declare that Jesus is the Lord of your life so that you can know on the inside that you know him. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need a God who loves me, who died for my sins, and then conquered death, the death that I will one day have to face. I ask that you change my heart. Really, truly change me on the inside. Let that washing of the water that I've experienced be indicative of a heart that's been washed by the Holy Spirit. Father, I give myself to you and my life to you on whatever capacity I can do it right now. Make me new today so that I can live for you tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you said that prayer, you are a part of God's kingdom. I want to encourage you to get yourself a Bible if you don't already have one. And if you don't, just reach out to me and I can help you with that. And make sure you join a Bible preaching church where you can learn more and more about how to grow in your faith and break free from the chains that this world is going to put you in. On another note, I hope that you found this video helpful in terms of understanding your faith better and maybe how you can share that faith with the world around you. Because I'm telling you, Christians, there are people around you every day that so need to hear what you would share with them. Will you be bold enough to do it, to declare your faith publicly? God bless, guys. And like I said before, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you and all the things that God is doing in your life. I'll see you in the next video.